Okay, I just uh, did a video. These may not be uh, sequential, so I don't know. Uh, I talked about a young monk who was translating for our Zen Buddhist retreat in Korea. And he's written a book, I think, called Enlightenment at a Young Age. And I said, may I give you my book and my wife's book? And he said, yeah, I would, I would love to if you would give me a copy. And so I, I gave Nicole's book... Uh, Rule number one, mom has fun. I actually gave it to him second, and he started laughing. He said, this is what I so recommend for moms. He said, whenever I speak, they have to have fun. They have to um, enjoy their children, enjoy their parenting. And I gave him my book, uh, which is called Noticing Fixes More Than Fixing, and he picked it up, he looked at the title, and the title, it, there's a little optical illusion on the title page and that I find fascinating. Obviously, I, if I didn't find it fascinating, I wouldn't put it on the front of the book. But he read the title, he said, Noticing Fixes More Than Fixing. He said, this isn't possible, is it? And I thought, what, no. Yes, no, kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of. Um, as a kinesiologist, as a chiropractor and a kinesiologist, uh, years ago, a patient of mine came in, and she had a tumor here. And she said, is there anything that you can do about it? And I said, no, there's nothing I can do about it, but there may be something that we can do about it. And I said, if we can get the body to realize that there is a tumor there, because a lot of times what happens with a tumor is the body takes a, a problem and it walls it off. And it walls it off because it doesn't know what to do with it and it loses communication. But if you can re-enhance, reinstate the communication and get the body all of the things that it needs, then the body can repair itself. And apparently we re-established re the communication with the tumor, uh, with her and the tumor, because when we first did it, the, her body was unaware that the tumor existed. And we re-established it, and uh, a few weeks later she came back and reported to me that the tumor was gone. Uh, we did some things, but what we got the body to do mainly was notice uh, that there was a dilemma, with the, with the, that there was something going on there. And... Uh, but in the emotional world, uh, the world of the shadow, the world of the mind, uh, it's more fitting because if you're sad, I'm, I'm going to tell you, unless you're at a funeral, there's a very rare uh, that you know why you're sad. Uh, you'll, your mind will come up with a reason. That little voice inside of your head will come up with a reason as to why you're sad. But if you can notice it and move on, find a context to move on in your life, get out to things that, uh, that make you happy, that make you excited, uh, my sister was talking to my cousin John and, and he said that sounds like denial and she said John sometimes denial is really efficient in life <laughs> and it's not denial if you're doing what you love doing if you found this, that which captivates you which keeps you curious then a lot of the emotional world you can see it for what it is it's an illusion it's, it doesn't make any sense uh, but it captivates people and it keeps them captivated for years and years and years. And sometimes you can get, okay, there's some sadness. Notice it and move on. Oh, there's some fear. What is it about? Oh, I don't know. But I'm going to move on. I'm going to move out into trust and with courage and with discipline and with a connection to life. And I'm going to look at the fear for what it is. Uh, an illusion. Because the last vestige of the mind, the last vestige of the world that will keep you in mediocrity is fear. And it doesn't really matter about what. So if you can notice it, noticing will fix more than fixing.